Guys, what's up? Chris Rod, Sun City Lawn Care. Woo, can you hear me on that one? Hey guys, how you doing? Quite a difference. So anyways, and I'm not wearing this because of COVID-19. I'm wearing this because I got bad, bad allergies. I do every year, I wear it. It's not a big deal to me. This is part of my lawn care regimen. So anyways, we're gonna be doing some mowing and trimming today and I'm gonna show you guys some issues that I've got in my own yard purposely done and neglected so that I could specifically make this video about air temperatures, humidity, increased weather, triple digit heat, and fun fungus, guys, fungus, and how to treat it, how to take care of it. Stay tuned. We're primarily talking about fungus, okay? How do you treat it? What is it? How do you even get fungus? Is it gonna kill your whole lawn? Who knows? But I'm making this video because I specifically did not put down a fungicide this season in preparation and staying prepared and staying ahead of the game, specifically so I can show you guys more or less here in West Texas in the desert environment, what you can apply, how to apply it, and the reason and when to apply it, okay? So you have to understand your environment. You have to understand your temperatures. You know, what part of the growing area are you in? Are you in the southern zone? Are you in the northern zone? Are you in the transition zone? What area are you guys in, okay? So you guys have to understand that, first off. Secondly, you have to keep monitoring your guys' weather temperatures, whether you guys are experiencing uh, triple digit heat, like here in El Paso. These past few weeks, uh, heated summer, we've been in the hundreds plus, and moreover, okay, you need to monitor your rainfall, okay, and your humidity levels. Now, statistically, I know from experience that here in El Paso, West Texas, we get rainfall mid-July to the end of July, okay, and sometimes early August, okay, that's our monsoon season, as they call it, um, which isn't even close to what is, which isn't even close to what a real monsoon season is, okay, but what we do is experience is a, a bit of rainfall, okay, and a week ago, we actually got, in my area, and it's funny, they, they'll tell you 10% chance of rain, 50% chance of rain, weather forecast is crazy off, but Fortunately, we actually got five days of rain, okay? It wasn't heavy rain, except for one day was actually pretty heavy, but primarily we get like some sporadic showers, okay? You guys probably in um, the Southeast, over in Florida, you guys might experience a lot of that where you get these like sporadic rainfalls. Um, I know recently Florida area up in the Carolinas, you guys had that um, tropical hurricane go through and you guys get this, you know, random rainfall. It's that season, okay? So now traditionally what you want to do when you guys are paying attention to
it's typically going to start off with some col uh, some copper coloration, discoloration, I should say. You know. to them as groups okay so what we have here is a, a professional grade product okay this is heritage g uh, a fungicide okay this is a, a zoxystrobin that's the active ingredient um you can go to your big box store okay home depot lowe's um ace hardware might have some in supply you can order the product from amazon your active ingredient is always going to be what you pay attention to when it comes to products when you buy them okay so this particular fungicide has got a zoxystrobin okay it's 0.31 percent okay we use a professional grade because it's typically got a higher percentage on the application okay, or the active ingredient per uh, per pound per thousand square feet so this is a group 11 okay so you have two ways of approaching this okay when you have actively growing fungus in your lawn okay you need to treat it accordingly there's preventative measures and when you're doing fungicide applications and i want you to remember i purposely did not put down this product so that i could show you an example of what fungus looks like inside of the lawn when you have actively growing fungus inside your lawn and you can identify it which you should in order to know which product to apply you want to always follow the label okay Look at all this. That's a lot of reading material right there, right? 
Same thing on the back side, a lot of reading material, and it even gives you a guide for which type of fungus you have, how many pounds of the product to apply based on uh, each per, uh, per thousand square feet, okay? So I coincidentally have about like 997 square feet, so we round that to an even thousand. So I'm either gonna be putting down a minimum or a maximum rate, okay? The difference between the two is when that you have a proactive approach to uh, preventing or a preventative measure, a preventative approach, you put down the minimum rate. Okay, so in this particular case, knowing that that is a brown patch or a Rhizoctonia solen 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 something like that. <laughs> Excuse my uh, lack of being able to read that specifically, but um, brown patch, okay. Fairy rings, gray leaf spot. Gray leaf spot is another very typical one that I've actually experienced in my own lawn this time of the year, a couple years back. And this is back when I used to keep my Bermuda grass about two to three inches tall. You can pull the grass blade out and you can see the actual spot and it's gray. It's literally a gray spot on the leaf tissue, on the leaf blade. When you see a brown spot or a gray spot on the actual leaf blade, that's, it couldn't be more obvious that, that's a, that it's a fungus, okay? Um, some other examples, uh, gray snow mold. We ain't getting that in West Texas. We don't get, we don't ever get no small snow at this time of the year. But snow mold, they look like a bunch of little round circles, okay? And they look just like moldy spots like you would see on some produce inside your refrigerator. It's disgusting looking, but it can't happen inside the lawn. But either way, the point of the matter is um, your different fungicides have different groups and different modes of actions, okay? And you have to apply the pounds per product based on whether you're taking a preventative measure approach to it or an active, okay, actively growing approach. Okay, so obviously in my yard, we've got fungus, okay, we've decided um, that it is a brown patch or brown spot, dollar spot, if you will, uh, fungus going on right now, okay. We base that on the coloration, the mere fact that it's sporadic throughout the lawn. We know it's not dog urine, we know it's not a pest issue because I've been applying those products uh, necessary. We know it's not a fertility issue because obviously I fertilize a lot. And we know we have increased temperatures, increased humidity, and we've just recently come out of a week straight of rain, okay? Normally, I would have applied this product on the last week of July. Why? Because I know in August, I've experienced gray leaf spot in my own lawn. So going back to the products, group 11, um, Typically, you're going to see this at Home Depot or Lowe's, Azoxystrobin, you're going to find in your Disease X, okay, from a Scotts brand. They've also got a Bio-Advanced uh, fungicide. That is going to be your, um, oh my gosh, what is that product? The active ingredient. It's another, I'll think of it here in a second. Going on to another product, okay, so back to this real quick. This is a granular. We're going to be utilizing this in a spreader today. If you're into liquids, okay, liquid forms, okay, this is Eagle 20 EW, okay. So what this is a concentrated, concentrated active ingredient. I can't even pronounce that word right there. Myclobutanol. We'll stick with that. <laughs> this is a class three, okay, fungicide. There you go, group three fungicide. I can zoom in on that. Group three fungicide, okay? What happens with your fungicides, okay, is the lawn, your grass, your turf, they get accustomed to being treated, all right? We know this because over the course of many years, we've used grass types like Bermuda, for example, that has become dang near resistant to non-selective herbicides like glyphosate. It takes a vast amount of glyphosate to actually kill Bermuda grass, okay? So we know that there are specific grass types that take multiple applications or different kinds of applications in order to kill or treat that particular situation. In this situation, we're talking about uh, uh, fungus, okay? So what you need to do is you need to use two different groups or two different modes of action in order to treat this. Typically, the residual for these products is anywhere from 14 to 28 days, okay? So this isn't like a, um, a 
pest control product that has a three to five month residual or a, a, a fertilizer that has uh, a four, four week, five week residual where you have to reapply, reapply. This product is something that you need to do more frequently, okay? 14 to 28 days. So what I recommend you guys do is you take one of your groups, either a group 11 fungicide or a group three fungicide, and then you alternate them. So today, what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be uh, applying the azoxystrobin, the fungicide from Heritage G in a granular form with our spreader. We're gonna go on the four pound rate because we have a, an actively growing problem, which is the maximum rate. And make sure you read your label, guys. The label's the law. Um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but if I'm not mistaken, you can only apply the max amount of this product uh, per season. You can't exceed uh, 30 pounds per thousand square feet per year, okay? So in other words, I cannot apply this whole bag, any more than this whole bag per year, which you're not gonna wanna do. I don't need to do, I don't have those kind of environments. But if you do run out of this product, what are you, what are you resorting to? A different group, which is why you should use two, okay? They're gonna treat similar issues. For example, um, and it doesn't say it on here, but we know from product label, that is going to be treating our brown patch today, okay? And if I, you know, it's not on the back, but if I open up this extensively long label listing here, it's going to be treating the same thing. We just have to understand that the importance behind it is that the lawn gets used to fungicides. So you want to trick the lawn into thinking it's being, well, not even trick it, you're actually going to be applying two different products so that it doesn't get accustomed to being treated to the same product over and over and over hope that makes sense guys uh anyways let me get to doing this we're gonna go ahead and do this live okay? that way you guys can get an idea of what i do and how i do it more specifically live feed and i hope my battery lasts actually we're gonna go four pounds of product per thousand square feet very small prill size make sure you read your labels okay it's gonna tell you um what dial setting to put it on for the product that you are using and the spreader you're using. In my particular case, it's a Scott spreader, so we're gonna put it at 2.75. You can kind of gauge it as you're going along. If you're losing too much product uh, and you're not even close to finishing, either space your spreading out every three feet based on the spreader vault or width spread, or dial back some guys. That's it, the product is down. Last thing I want to mention is that um, an option, if you really want to and you think your fungus is that bad, you can actually intertwine both products, both groups, 11 and 3, 11, 11, 3, <laughs> military side, military, anyway. 
11 to three, you can mix them together. You can do one application um, of your group three 11. Say, if they're both granulars, don't mix the two in the spreader. Do one of the products, spread it out, refill your spreader, do the other product, okay? Do, do not mix them together in the spreader, okay? But you can apply both of them at the same time or one consecutively right after the other if you think your fungus is that developed, if it's that grown, okay? I don't recommend you doing that, okay? I recommend I recommend you trying one, doing one. They're gonna treat the issue at hand, okay? Notate, put that in your documents on when you did the application. There we go, that's a good picture. It's actually looking really bad over in this whole area here. Document when you do that, space your applications either in between 14 or 28 days apart, okay? That is the residual of this product, okay? Going into the winter months, just know, or going into the fall, just know that through experience, I know that in the first few weeks of August, we, we typically experience this sort of thing. So stay tuned. I'm gonna show you the results uh, in a couple of weeks. Maybe I'll see some um, difference within a couple of days. Ooh, that's a really good picture. You see the brown areas there? And we'll come back and we'll revisit these issues, this lawn. The last final step, water the product in okay this is not something you want to wait for the leaf tissue to soak in you want to go ahead and water the product in, get it into the root system okay so that the plant actually has the opportunity to take up take in the fungus side or fungicide to, to start um, taking immediate effect okay you want to cure this sooner than later in my particular case i waited so i can show you guys exactly my process and the products that I use, okay? In the description below, I'm gonna put a couple other products that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's that are a little bit more affordable for you DIYers out there, you homeowners that wanna take advantage of the opportunity to prevent fungus in your own lawn. Chris Rod, Sun City Lawn Care. Check you guys later.